Are you great? Got a tweet ready? It's it's. Oh, I forgot the tweet. It's too. Oh, it's too oh, late. It's too oh. late. It's too late, Lewis. The wheels are turning. That's We're great. Live. We're live, Lewis. It's too late. We we can't stop now. <laughs> the bits are coming in. The bits are coming in. Ready? Boom. How did I forget the tweet? That was the thing that I was forgetting, Lewis. That was the thing I was forgetting. But I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that on the fly. Right now. And it's gonna be. It's going to be a beautiful tweet. Some say it's the most beautiful tweet that's ever been tweeted, Lewis. And we're God, waiting for them to pour in. Oh, yeah. Here? We got viewers cool. here already. Guys, I'm sorry. Give me give me 10 seconds. I forgot the tweet. Lewis is preparing his horse crop for my, for my derriere. <laughs> Go cast Ultra! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I feel like I need some um, uh, Mortal Kombat music to go with that. Cult cast ultra. We got Zach Hicks here with his still toe still toe boots. I'm I'm impressed that you know that song, Lewis. Um, iPhone 14 Pro, Apple Watch Ultra. You know what? I really like this new Ultra moniker. I have to say. Well, it reminds me of the next version. Ultraman. I'm not sure. What? I don't know who that is, Lewis. Is that a is that a hero <laughs> from your youth? It's a, it's a Japanese some... TV show, man. Ultraman. Oh. No, I don't think I know it. Yeah. Uh, AirPods Pro Classic. 2 and everything else. Okay. <laughs> that tweet's going to get him in. That tweet is going to get him in. Hey, guys, while we're uh, waiting the, here, give us a like. Let's send some signals to YouTube that um, <laughs> they should be watching this show and recommending this show instead of... Uh, uh, Gruber's sn- sn- snore chat. Jeez. I mean, talk show. Wow. Snore show. <laughs> I love ripping on Gruber. So I just, you know, I just, I just really enjoy it. <laughs> uh, okay. I think that's it. Yeah. There we go. The tweet has been tweeted, Lewis. Still see it. There, there it goes. All right. Shout out to Dipsy Do. Cult Gast Ultra. Level Remix is here. Uh, he wants us to do it for the queen. Indeed. Chase McLean. He's at full mass today. Oh yeah. I've got, uh, several gauze pads on. Uh, we got captain Dr. Zach Hicks. We got Corey Blosser, Ronald Hudson's here. Oh, from Alaska. Okay. That's far out there. Far out, man. Far out, man. We got Gerald pie. He wants to go to the Island. I'm coming with you. He's, uh, we got Mark LaPointe ordering the 14 pro max at 6 a.m. Oh, you, you monster. God, why do they do that to us? Why do they do that to us? Uh, Dipsy Dude, no losses on the AirPods Pro. Sadness ensues. Yeah. Sad Keanu on that one. Corey <laughs> Bloss is here. How's Leander handling the news about the Queen? Well, he's not here. We asked him to be here, and he wouldn't be here, which probably has nothing to do with that. But um, uh, I'm sure he is definitely sad about that, as are we all. As are we all. We have an exciting show, guys. We're going to be talking about our reactions to everything, and there is a lot to say. I mean, I could probably do a whole show just about Apple Watch Ultra to be totally frank with you all. It's um, it's quite a device, and I'm kind of <laughs> conflicted on it. I, I I was telling Lewis like I probably spend an hour on Twitter just going down the deeper rabbit holes, looking at pictures, so looking at videos. We're gonna show a bunch of that stuff here today. If you haven't made your buying decision, even if you have, I I still think it's gonna be interesting. Um, and I and I think I'm gonna be. I think I'm going to be purchasing one, which is funny because I always <laughs> clown on the big watch, right? Right. But, but you know, the thing about the the Ultra is they th- there's a zone between um, uh, there's there's a zone between uh, small and large that the Apple Watch just just doesn't work in. It's just it, it's it's um, it's a uh, it looks like a piece of jewelry. It's too thin and and too diminutive, but it's also large, and that doesn't work. But they went ultra with it, Lewis, and <laughs> they made it big and bulky enough that I think now it does work. Because if you're gonna go big on a watch, you gotta go big. You gotta go Casio, Casio G-Shock. I mean, you gotta just go for it, <laughs> and you gotta make it so big and chunky that it just looks like a like a you know it looks like a Swiss Army knife on your wrist. It looks utilitarian, and I think they nailed it, man. <laughs> but um, before we do that, look at that. I'm already going ultra. Let's um. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and cue up Mrs. You Know Who and we'll get the show rolling. Oh, Mrs. D. 
Oh, Mrs. D, you seem excited. Oh, yes, I'm excited for the Apple Watch Ultra. Oh, you are? Oh, yes. And I also went ultra hard on Mr. Leander Caney last night. Oh, God. Yeesh. Gross. I'll be using the diving mode to dive into the sack with El <laughs> Caney. Oh, God. It's two. She did two. That's just gross. I don't want to hear about that, Mrs. D. If you don't mind, I, I got all the show notes up. And uh, I want to just get on with the show and not hear about your uh, your escapades with one Mr. LK. I'm happy <laughs> for both of you, though. It's nice for you. Uh, let me see. I think we got everything going. And uh, let's just get this show rolling in three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to the Cassie Best 30 Plus Minute Out Conversation. You're going to hear all week long. I'm your host, the Eyeball Bronze. Everyone, Elijah, join me today. He'll be using the diving features on the new Apple Watch Ultra to, tack, to track escaped riders, of course, who think they can lose him in a lake or an ocean or underwater cave. <laughs> you better pack a diving spear because it's coming for you. Managing editor of Cultimac, Lewis Wallace is here. Oh, yeah. There's no losing you, Lewis. Getting ready to go out on some adventures, some nice hunts. <laughs> some hunts, yeah, exactly. Because it's easy to stay on their trail when they're on land, but... They go in the water, the hounds lose them, you know. <laughs> they start getting all tricky on you. Oh, yeah. And now you can just dive right in. You press the action button, boom. You know what depth you're at. You know how fast you can descend. There's no <laughs> there's no escaping you now. All right, everyone, we're going to be doing our uh, our reactions to everything. And uh, I, I'm sorry for those of you that were here for the pre-show because I'm going to just repeat myself. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot to react to. There's a whole lot to react to, especially the Apple Watch Ultra, which... Uh, was 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 the uh, best of show for me, honestly. Like I, I just I saw that thing as soon as we saw the mock up, which happened what last week. I was like, oh, like this is not really what I was expecting, and it kind of got my beard damp, so to speak. I noticed your goatee was glistening, are, Lewis. So that's a are good you start. talking? <laughs> you talking about the uh, renders that came out like two days ago? Just seems like last week. Well, there was the renders, but there was that. There was actually, um, oh, I guess it was the CAD renders that we saw. Yeah. When I first saw those, I was like, oh, like this watch is looking aesthetically pleasing, better than I thought it was going to. Uh -huh. So, and then there's the battery life and there's 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 all sorts of stuff. So before we dive into everything, let me go ahead and, uh, where's my, oh, there we go. There, I was like, where's my web browser? Let me go ahead and say thank you to Squarespace for supporting this episode. Squarespace has everything you need to sell anything. And I know that from experience because I've been using Squarespace for years to host my uh, cultcloth.co product, which you should definitely check out. And it is just set it and forget it. I mean, once you have your website set up, which is really easy to do, you can add all your products and and you can connect it to your social media. You can integrate it with all these different services of which I use several to help me run the business. And uh, and then everything just kind of works. You don't have to do anything. I mean, you have to do some stuff. But all the manual, laborious, boring stuff, you can have managed by, uh, by other people if you want or other services that you integrate with your website. And I have literally never had a single outage, at least not that I know of, with coltcloth.co. The, the website looks amazing it looks beautiful it, i i spent some time customizing it didn't have to code anything i just drag and drop everything make it make made it look uniquely mine and added images and stuff and um and from that point forward it was just you know just worked and it's been working ever since and the money just rolls in every day every every day just a wheelbarrow shows up full of money full of uh full of uh cult cloth money which uh I I don't even need it all anymore. Now we're just using it to heat the house and, you know, that type of thing. I, I would think they would deliver that with one of those, like, little automated robot things, you know? Yeah, well, it was Rather a Rather than a wheelbarrow. It was a metaphor, yeah. It's a digital wheelbarrow. Oh, thing. I see. Yeah. Not, not an actual wheelbarrow. Um, I don't want to misrepresent Squarespace. They're not going to send wheelbarrows to your house full of cash. <laughs> Although that, I would advocate that's a service that they should add because how cool would that be? White glove, wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow cash. Money service. delivery. If you uh, if you want to uh, if you need a website for your business if you haven't set up a website for yourself for representing your like your skill sets to potential employers if you want to do a blog you know uh, if you want to show your photography to people on a really beautiful website check it out squarespace.com forward slash cultcast and for right now for a limited time you can save twenty percent twenty percent off any new plan 
Uh, the offer expires September 10th, so act fast. Use code SEP20WB, SEP20WB, for 20% off any new plan. That's one of the biggest discounts I've ever seen them offer. So take advantage of it. Get yourself a year of service. You get an additional discount uh, on top of the discount code. So it's a really, really great price. And you'll have yourself set up for the whole year, which is what I do. Squarespace.com forward slash cultcast. Use code SEP, uh, S-E-P, um, let's see here, SEP, W, I'm sorry, SEP 20 WB, SEP 20 WB. And thanks to Squarespace for supporting this episode. Whiskey right, barrel? Let's... What does it stand for? Wheelbarrow. Uh, wheel, yeah, the WB stands for wheelbarrow <laughs> full cash, which is what they'll be sending to your house. I mean, once you launch your product. Believe me, I mean, <laughs> coatcloth.co, I always say the orders just keep rolling in. They just keep rolling in, Lewis. And, I'm very uh, happy for you. I get to start my own <laughs> product line, so I don't know what it's going to be. You you want to get that a... wheelbarrow, that passive wheelbarrow full of cash money. <laughs> exactly. You know? That's the I goal. Need it. I need in on that wheelbarrow of cash action so I can buy some new gear. All right. All right. We're going to do something a little unorthodox here. <gasps> uh, it's for everyone in the chat. I don't know what to start with. Do you want to hear us talk <laughs> about iPhone 14 Pro first? Or should we just jump right into Apple Watch Ultra? Wow. Live user poll, reader poll, what listener do you poll. You guys got you guys got ten seconds to <laughs> uh, make your choices here. Oh, Chase McLean. He wants Ultra. He wants us to go Ultra. Adam Broussard. Oh yeah, he wants yeah 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 yeah. There you go, Adam <laughs> Broussard. I don't want to hear nothing about it, Lewis. Uh, get iPhone out of the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Level Remix wants iPhone. Dipsy D wants Ultra. Gerard Pie wants Pro. Go Ultra. F- go Ultra first. I might even go Nuclear. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Okay. I'm. I'm guessing. I'm seeing more Ultras. We're going Ultras first. Okay. Wow. We're gonna okay. Dive. We're gonna get, end we're, everything. We're, we're gonna just rip <laughs> up the notes. We're doing it. We're doing it live, Lewis. We're gonna just mess with the order a little bit. Um. So let's see here. Let me bring up. Uh. Let me bring up Ultra, and we're gonna just dive right in. Uh. Why we're doing that, Lewis? Why? 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 While we're doing that. Thoughts on the Ultra? Do you want to take us away on what you thought when they introduced Ultra and what you think? And are you going to be buying the $800 Apple Watch Ultra, <laughs> Lewis? Well, you know, I, I got to say, I, I had one in my cart yesterday. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got to the point where you have to pick a watch band size. Mm-hmm. And I, I hesitated. I, and you froze? I froze up. I, I couldn't make a decision. I'm like, I, how big's my wrist? I don't know. And then I started thinking about spending $800 mm-hmm. on a watch. and I th- And I saw that... Somebody put that tweet on there of like a, you know, a, a man of some size sitting on a couch with his <laughs> with his TV remote saying, "Yeah, I can't wait to get the Apple Watch Ultra." I think you like, saw that because I liked I liked that. And I thought, oh, that's kind of me. Although you know, I gotta say, yeah, I I, I love the way it looked. I, I also I I've always been a fan of the bigger watch. Mm-hmm. So I and I I think it looks better than I expected. I, I mean I. It's weird. We've kind of run the gamut from like, oh, it's going to be a super Garmin, super G-Shock kind of thing to like, oh, it's just going to be a bigger Apple Watch. You're like, oh, it's bigger, beefier Apple Watch. It, it distinctively looks like an Apple Watch, or distinctly does. And uh, it, and yet it looks more rugged and more, I don't know, it just looks good. And I'm sure it's huge. I mean, some of the pictures I've seen. <laughs> That's what it's like. Somebody's tell. almost got like a ping pong paddle attached to their <laughs> hand. Uh, so that's what I can't tell. That, that, that <laughs> that's exactly it. I'm like, when I see the pictures, I'm like, I love the design. Um, I actually like that little, uh, that little extra, that little extra uh, beef, that little extra chunk on the side. It reminds me of. Um, I'm gonna try and bring this up. So this is a. Super obscure reference, but I'm a huge fan of uh, Aliens. Um, and there is this watch that Ellen Ripley wears <laughs> in that movie, which has been a watch that I've always wanted to own, but they're hard to get and they're expensive. And it has that same extra chunk on the side with the buttons on it. It, it looks a little bit different, but it's kind of like a similar design. And that's what I was thinking of when I saw the Ultra with that with that extra, I don't even know what to call it. That thing on the side, that the, the lump. Yeah, I don't the know. Extra lump uh, on the side. It's a, it's I don't a know projection. What you call that. It's a. I don't know. It's a watch for non-dynamic here. island. <laughs> the non-dynamic island on the side, <laughs> the static island on the side with the button inside. So it kind of reminds me uh, of that. Um, 
But the thing that I can't tell, and I'm showing pictures here for those of you listening, is is this thing going to look absolutely absurd on my wrist? Is it is it big <laughs> enough that it surpasses the uh, the absurd clownish look that the 45 millimeter has on my wrist? Because though that watch is big, it's too small to to be chunky like a like a G like a like a G Shock watch, like a Casio G Shock. And you have to surpass the threshold of <laughs> of reasonable watch sizes and get into the ridiculousness of <laughs> of of watch like large watches in order for it to start looking cool again. And that's what I can't tell. And a lot of people are taking pictures. And I'm sorry for all the male arm hair you're going to see here. Oh no. Um, <laughs> and by looking at these pictures, I honestly cannot tell if this is going to look normal or absolutely clownish. On my wrist. <laughs> this is probably one of the better. What do you got? What do you think, chat? You want to talk about Flava Flav? We can do that in the in the post show. Uh, okay, so so okay, so I'm showing pictures. I'm sorry for those of you listening. There is one that I'm showing, and it looks cool on this guy's wrist. And then in the, in the very ne- next picture, from a different angle, I'm like, that looks totally absurd. That looks <laughs> way too big, and and not only that, but. I feel like I might also feel a little self-conscious wearing this on your wrist because it's so large and so in charge. It's not, <laughs> it's, it, it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's just a big piece of bling on your wrist, right? Like there, there, there's, there's, there's nothing about this that's subtle. <laughs> it's, it's actually wider than the person's wrist. It, it sticks out on both sides in that picture there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and so, and, and that's kind of what I'm worried about with, yeah. uh, with my with my wrist and that's that's the only thing because i already know like i know that we i, I know that i'm not going to use 80 percent of the advanced features that are included <laughs> in the apple watch ultra 80 maybe even 90 percent. <laughs> but i'll tell you what i do love i do like the chunky design i love the static island on the side i don't mind the extra buttons i like how big and beefy the buttons are um and i i love that it gets more battery life, even though it's not as good as I was expecting, right? 36 hours, I was hoping for more. But more than that, more than anything else, the freaking brightness, 2,000 nits, is insane. I have a, I have a studio monitor here um, that I use for filming outdoors. It's built for being used outdoors, and it's 1,000 nits, and this is twice as bright as that. So like <laughs> in daylight, this thing is going to be the easiest... Apple Watch to see that has ever been created, obviously. And one of the best and brightest OLEDs that I have ever actually encountered. This actually goes for the iPhone 14 Pro, which also does up to 2,000 nits of outdoor brightness. Uh, I don't know of another OLED panel out there in existence that goes this bright. There might be something, but I don't think that there is. Like This is the brightest OLED that exists on Earth in a commercial product, as far as I know, which means it's going to be super easy maybe even ultra easy to see <laughs> outdoors. And that's pretty cool. And it also, I think, means that the uh, non-active screen mode will also be a lot easier to see because it will probably be a lot brighter. <laughs> Pip-Boy Ultra, yeah. <laughs> level Remix. That's exactly what I was thinking. So Level Remix in the chat is comparing this to the Pip-Boy in the Fallout game series. And, and that is kind of what it reminds me of. Look at this thing. Like, with that. I mean, look at this. Look at this. This is just absurd. God, all this arm hair. Look at that thing, though. Jeez. <laughs> it, you know, they, yep. they did a good job with making the, the bands look extra sort of manly and rugged, too. Yeah. You know, which definitely, I mean, it adds a lot to the way that the thing looks. Um, it would look funny if they had a little tiny band. And they say that these these are going to work with uh, <laughs> with older older model watches too but although yeah, i kind of like wonder how well right. that's gonna work but but uh yeah i just the aesthetic i i, I really like the aesthetic and how? i would buy this on aesthetic alone honestly like the the only question i have is does this is this gonna look like <laughs> is this gonna look clownish on my wrist right right and i think most people who get it they may not be able to pull it off you gotta have the right wrist to pull this off <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things that really it would be nice to be able to go and see what it looks like before you actually pull the trigger. I, you know, the, the good news is you can always return it, right? 
you just say, oh, that's too big. I don't like it. Forget it. Take it back. No problem. No questions asked. Another thing that might make you uh, happy to pull the trigger is if you think about it. I mean, what did a Titanium Series 7 Apple Watch cost? I'm it pretty isn't... sure it was like that, right around that same price, if not exactly. I thought it was more, price. but you're probably right. That was the other thing I was surprised by is when they were showing it off, I was thinking this thing's going to be eight ninety nine or a thousand bucks for sure. And when they yeah. came out at seven ninety nine, I was surprised. I think a lot of people were surprised because that kind of seems reasonable for this style of watch. And it's, I guess, from what I've heard, it's cheaper than competing Garmin's. But this was that. Um, that surprise price, this was something that Apple did with iPhones too. Like We kept hearing that they were going to raise the price, right? And then they didn't. So I, th- I thought that was a strange play because a lot of companies are taking like the environment of inflation to raise their prices, even if they don't need to because they're like, well, everyone is expecting you to do it, and so they do it. And Apple made the value play here, which is not characteristic of Apple. I and know. it's something I was, that I, I really stunned. appreciated that they did. Yeah. Even and uh, Apple Watch SE is actually more affordable now than it was. They right, they made it cheap the price on the SE. Yeah, did they drop it like thirty bucks or something? Yeah. So and uh, yeah, that, that was a head scratcher all, all the way around, man. Apple is impervious to inflation. Not what I expected. Not what I expected either. The one thing I was so let me talk about some things I don't like about the Ultra. <laughs> um, I mean, first off is mandatory cellular plan. I I don't want a cellular plan. I don't want to pay. I would actually love to have a cellular plan, but I'm not going to pay the freaking vampires at at and $10 a month. Did you say mandatory? It's not mandatory. Well, it, I mean, it comes with it's cellular. It's capable. It's well, capable. Okay. You don't have to turn it on. Yes, but you have to. You, you can't get a, a Ultra for a smaller price if you choose not to get cellular, right? Like That's well, what I would have liked to have done. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's a titanium watch that costs the same as the smaller titanium watch, I think. And uh, and it just happens to have cellular. Maybe maybe the titanium ones had cellular anyway. I'm not actually sure. Um, I think it's a nice thing to have. It, it, it's funny. I was I didn't have time to check into this today, but I was looking at that and I was thinking, well, I wonder what what the state of the art is. You know, with Verizon, for instance, like how much are they going to charge me now if I want a cellular? Because it would be cool to be able to have a watch that was bright enough that you could go outside, go for a walk or a run or whatever, and not take your wa- uh, your phone which is a big chunk of, you know, heavy, and, and like, just be able to get by with the watch. I mean, I think that would be really cool. But I've never done it just because, I, you know, like you, I'm a, too much of a cheapskate, and I basically never go anywhere without my phone. But it seems like this watch might be, like, the screen might be big enough and bright enough that you could actually use it more <laughs> when you're outside without your phone. Yeah, I think so. And, and uh, I mean, I guess it's nice to have cell- cellular even if you don't activate it and you don't have to activate it. But I mean, I kind of don't want the cellular rays to be shooting through my wrist to be honest. Oh, uh, jeez. Ster- steril- sterilizing. Ooh, like, 5G, know. you'll get curly hair on your wrist. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, um, when your private parts start falling off, you know, <laughs> you may have a different song to sing. Oh, man. We, we are going to get booted from YouTube. Uh, it's cool. It's cool of you. Uh, 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 have uh, suspicions about five G. I don't. I don't think that's a problem. But I have uh, suspicions that it's slow. <laughs> well, that 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 I don't even think that's a uh, a controversy anymore. It's like it's like we all know it's just as fast as four uh, G was at this point, at least in my city. Anyway, uh, yeah. So I don't love that it has five G that you have to pay for cellular. I wish there was a model that didn't have it because I would would rather pay less and not have it. But whatever. I want to activate it because I'm not going to pay the vampire. <laughs> Bloodsuckers at AT&T, $10 a month Jeez. for my unlimited plan that I already pay for to give the data to my Apple Watch. I mean, how how asinine is that? And then um, I also don't love like the orange motif they went with here. Like the orange really? ring on this digital crown. I don't love yeah. it. Apple finally takes a step in the direction of bold colors. The only step in that direction, I might add. And you're, you're now you're upset with it. And I wish it was just a Come on, nice- man. Nice Come little on, man. silver. I don't. <laughs> I I, I want to have a a color that fits aesthetically with the color of the watch. And this is my problem with the red ring that I mentioned on Twitter for the other Apple watches is that horrible looking red ring that they put on all the Apple watches, and it clashes with the color of the metal, which 
is kind of stunning to me that they haven't resolved because Apple pays such painstakingly uh, close detail or close attention to those kind of details. So I don't love the orange, although I think it, it looks okay. It's not my favorite. And then they made the button on the side, the action button. They made that orange as well, which I just think is kind of an odd choice. Why do we need a big orange button? It's like... It's it's not just orange. It's international orange. Oh, is that what they call it? Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I would prefer uh, domestic gray or <laughs> uh, you know Mexico blue, whatever they want to call well, it. you're not an explorer. I guess not. <laughs> and I'm not going to use the watch. I mean, the watch to me is as is 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 a piece of fashion, and I love that it has a bigger screen. The brighter screen obviously is is going to be way better than the current Apple watches. Um, but all the diving features and all that kind of stuff, I probably and I, I imagine a lot of people will never actually use because there's a lot of us that we got to have the best, right, Lewis? And there's <laughs> a lot of people who listen to this show who already pre-ordered this, knowing that they're going to just use it on their couch, like that big fat guy <laughs> meme that we saw on Twitter who's like looking at his uh, Apple Watch Ultra while he's on his couch with his uh, bowl of Cheetos. You know, Graham fully, uh, Graham Bauer, our Apple Watch expert, yeah. he, he fully nailed why this, you know, why Apple is making this, because it's aspirational. And in fact, Jaws, uh, Jazziak, uh, actually used the word aspiration in a tweet about about the watch mm. and and that's what it's about it's like you're watching that and you're going wow it would be so cool to be able to climb a mountain and <laughs> run across a desert without Once sweating I have the apple watch i'm gonna climb a mountain man i am i, I mean and i gotta say the 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 diving stuff i found that super compelling because i i I'm a certified scuba diver, right? And I you rare, are. I, I rarely I go. Know that about you? It's all. I love to do it, but I rarely go. And I, I was talking to my wife about it yesterday. I was like, you know, that would be really fun. You know, it'd be awesome to get one, go out diving again. And she's like, oh, but you know, you'd have to, you know, go somewhere to go diving. And, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, well, yeah, that's what life's about: Ex- adventure, experience. The adventure awaits you. That's Lewis. what it's about. The adventure get awaits an Apple you. Watch Ultra and get out there and live life, right? But you won't. You're gonna get it. Well, and I you're might gonna walk up your... to the park. Yeah, they... I mean, look. <laughs> I think there are enough practical features in the Apple Watch Ultra Edition that, for me, I'm 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 happy as long as it doesn't look like a ridiculous uh, <laughs> clown artifact on my wrist, which I am concerned about. And I and I'm probably gonna pre-order one of these. I haven't yet, but I'm probably going to. Um, I will keep it, and I, I, I love that it's super hyper water resistant. Um, I actually kind of like the starlight color, to be honest with you. Um, and again, the display being 2,000 nits, I, I can't overemphasize how important that is when you when you wear a watch regularly if you're trying to see it outdoors. And then also just being able to see your screen more clearly and have everything you know be ultra, ultra big, ultra sharp, ultra beautiful, ultra, ultra colored, colorful. And I really like this cool red night mode that they have on oh, the watch. Yeah. I just think from like a design aesthetic, like that's really cool. It's like a minimalist design face that's all one color. I just think it looks cool. So, I mean, I'm, I'm approaching this from a completely different angle. Like I'm not an outdoor adventurer, at least not yet. Might become one. I might become one soon. Uh, I could be like Casey Neistat who one day decided he wanted to climb like Mount Kilimanjaro with his friend and they just flew on a plane and like went and climbed the mountain and almost died. You're kidding me. <laughs> he made a video about it. That's on his channel. I don't know where it is. Mm. I also love like the dual speakers. Um, I love that it has hyper accurate GPS because it has the dual, uh, the dual GPS in the watch. What about the life saving decibel? What is it? Eighty six decibel that's siren not, on your wrist. I mean, wrist. that's not that loud. Eighty six decibels is is it loud. Can be heard six hundred feet. It said. Well, yeah, but it would be super <laughs> quiet from six hundred feet away. Um, I mean, that's useful. I don't foresee a situation where I need yeah. to activate that. No, nobody foresees that situation. <laughs> oh, touche, t- touche, Lewis. Um, so again, it all comes down to how silly is this going to look on my wrist? <laughs> I think it's chunky <laughs> enough that it's past, it, it's, it's surpassed the, the silliness threshold and it's become chunky and cool again, but that's what I can't <laughs> tell. What do you think, chat? We're getting, people are all over the place with this. <laughs> it's, the, it's a divisive device. Is it? Yeah, a lot of people people love it or hate it. They either think it's really cool and they can't wait to order one, or they think it's ugly. I haven't really 
heard anyone say, oh, yeah, like it's kind of cool from a design perspective, like the size of it. People either think it's ridiculous or they really love it. And, I haven't been uh, seeing too much of the ridiculous, but um, I, I, I trust you've seen that on Twitter. So, Lewis, I'm sorry, did you answer this question? Are you getting one? I, it's still in my card. You, you <laughs> added it to your card, but you haven't, heard, you haven't made the That's commitment. Right. That's right. I think you should do it, Lewis, and then we can talk about it. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I try to I try to justify it to my wife yesterday. Well, that's the thing you can't something like this you can't hide, right? It's, it's unhideable. <laughs> it's <laughs> close it's two thousand nits of brightness on your wrist. <laughs> you know, it's like in bed, it's gonna act, accidentally activate, and everyone's gonna be blinded. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so there's there's no way to hide it, man. Uh, but yeah. you know, for eight hundred bucks, it's like you know, mm, it's 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 not a bad price. <laughs> Which band are you gonna go for? Okay. All right. Let's let's go through this. Are we talking about talking details here? Yeah. Okay. So we got the band choices here, and I'll describe these for those of you listening. Um, my apologies to those listening. Like these are the kinds <laughs> of segments that are I always feel bad for our listeners, which is most of you, because uh, you got to listen, and and I have to do my best to describe these. So there's three different band choices, right? Yeah. There is the um, let's see here. There's the Alpine Loop, which is basically just a nylon loop. And this is there's a green one, an or- orange one, and a white one. And I was going to go for the green one, but uh, I actually saw I Justine talk about this this loop. And this loop, it it fastens with a titanium hook that goes into like a right. bunch of pre sewn loops on the actual strap itself. So you can't really get like a precise fit of <laughs> of of the of the band because it's more like really? a traditional band that has like a little pin that goes into a hole and so you can't really make the watch tight so that's kind of a major bummer man because i don't want it to be loose <laughs> uh yeah the other ones the the trail loop just looks so normal okay so let's go to the um let's go to the well we'll just go in order so they there is the min, there's the ocean band which is like the, the fluoroelastomer band that's like the sport band it's really chunky and um, it's really bumpy and uh, it's it's textured. Now this is cool, but it's a little. It, it actually kind of has a similar problem as the um, the Alpine Loop, in that you can't precisely adjust it, and it's a little too chunky in my humble opinion. Although I do like that white, I have to. Admit. How about that yellow? I'm not a yellow guy. <laughs> That's like the guys that drive like those bright canary yellow Mustangs. Not it's kinda, not me. I kind of like the yellow. Yeah, I knew you would say that <laughs> because you know you as as uh as minimalist as you seem, Lewis. You like to have a a um, you like to have a, a flash of flair on your body. It's like that. It's like that <laughs> Iron Man red Apple Watch you got on your wrist right now. Can you show that real fast? Uh, you know what? I I just have a sport band on there now. Okay, but yeah, but the watch itself is yeah, the like, watch is red. it's in your yeah. face, man. By That's... the way, they didn't kill the red watch. I thought for sure they were going to kill the red watch. For the so... Series 8? Yeah. I think how upset Bono would be. That would never happen. <laughs> TC would never do that to him. So so I feel like um, I'm uh, the Sicilian on, um, on a, uh, oh, God, what was the name of that movie? Um, the Princess Bride. So I'm like, so clearly I can't go with the ocean, man. <laughs> hey, you know what? Yeah. I got to tell you. Okay. Uh, I was looking at this yesterday, and, and like it says, an, an Apple's press release says, Ocean Band is designed specifically for extreme water sports and recreational diving with titanium buckle and corresponding spring-loaded loop. Molded from flexible fluoro- fluoroelastomer, yeah. it yeah. stretches and utilizes the tubular geometry for a secure fit. So I don't know if you're right about the not being able to get tight enough. I mean, who knows? Well, so so now I'm looking at the trail loop, and I don't love the design of the trail loop. I So the trail loop... The, the, the colors don't inspire me. And what yeah. I don't like is on the edges of the strap, they have different colors. Like, I want my strap to just be one color. I don't want a multicolor strap. Yeah. Right? And so, like, I could get the gray, but I feel like it's pretty boring. I don't really love the color. And I don't like that the edges of it, like, the middle has a pattern, but the edges are solid. I don't like that. But this is the only one that is infinitely adjustable. So... Because it's a nylon strap, you can you know make it as tight or as loose as you want it to be, and that's kind of what I want. My I don't want to have a loose floppy watch. No one wants a flop a watch flopping all around, Lewis. It's it's basically a sport loop, right? I mean, but it's just yeah. it's just thinner or something. And you know what I'm thinking is I can just get a sport loop and just wear that, 
with the watch because I actually love my, my, my watch is not on my wrist right now. It's charging, but I actually love like the Nike sport loops because they have like that reflective element in there and they have a really cool like sheen look to them. Mm-hmm. And I suppose I could just do one of those. So in that case, I think what I will do is, is exactly that. Like I'll probably go with this um, Alpine, this Alpine green uh, mm-hmm. loop and, and pray that it fits me. And if not, <laughs> hawk it on eBay yeah, or something. And- and you're not going to get the orange. <laughs> Lewis. I'm drawn to the bright ones. I know. You're like a bee, Lewis. <laughs> you're like a bee. Uh, you want to have a flash of color, man. Like you're, you're like one of those. You're like, you're like Eddie Q. It's like most of you looks pretty buttoned up, but then like the inside of your cuff, some wild, crazy design made by some Italian designer. You know what B- I mean? Bugatti. Yeah. Exactly. It's got some fancy name. It sounds like a sports car and it just has some crazy wild design with sparkles and you know and i like that too but it has to be minimal like <laughs> it, it, it can't be I, I i don't like bright orange stuff like if they made like a gray with sparkles in it man i'd be all over that if they made like a starlight sparkle strap with gray that, that would be my strap like no there's few people that you know that love sparkles more than me it's just just being <laughs> totally honest with you i have a thing for sparkles yeah. I even thought about changing my middle name to Sparkles, but I was thinking about going for that orange one, and that's when I ran into the uh, the sizing dilemma and bailed. Yeah, maybe I'll order one of the the ocean bands, and then I'll be ready for that dive trip when I'm ready. <laughs> that's a chunky boy. Let's go back to it. The it ocean looks pretty ba- good. I bet you it looks good, just you know, in everyday wear. Yeah, it probably does. And that's the thing. And and I forget who was saying this. It might have been um, Captain Doctor Zach Hicks. Was it you? I think it was, and he was saying it's almost like you need to have an Apple Watch Ultra, but you also need to have an Apple Watch Series 8 or Series 7 or something, and and the Ultra you wear when you're going out and adventuring, and then the regular watch you wear for everyday life, and I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to wear, <laughs> I don't want to have to have two watches. I want this to be something that doesn't look so absurd that I can't wear it every single day. And again, not to repeat myself, but I'm going to. <laughs> that's what I'm not sure of. Is this a watch? Can you wear this watch every day without looking like a rodeo clown? <laughs> that's not. That's what I'm not sure of. <laughs> you know. You know what? I'm kind of surprised is they don't have like a a real dressy, you know, yeah, silver, just silver metal band. You're not and the I'm only sh- one I've heard say that. People have been like, "Where, where's like the like the re- regular classy band, like a like a link bracelet or something?" Yeah, so that you get that like, "Oh, I'm a I'm a tough guy, but I'm at the bar." But you right? can use the regular straps with this, so you can you can do that. And I think that the reason they didn't do that is because they want to position this as an adventuring watch, right? Like, so you don't need a strap like that for an adventuring watch. Although, yeah. I think that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't wait to see what uh, third party people. Oh, uh, God, I just said the I uttered the utter Apple incantation. I can't wait to see. Uh, sorry, I get so tired of hearing them say that. We can't wait to see what you do with our new products. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm reading the chat right now. People are noticing concurrent viewership, all time high. I, I also. Come on that. now. Yeah. <laughs> ultra. We're, go- we're going ultra. And if you stay tuned, by mid-show, we'll, we'll be at nuclear. <laughs> DEFCON 5 is happening. So, I don't know. What else can we say about the watch, Lewis? I, I think we're both going to get one. I mean, I'm definitely going to get one. I'm going to try it out, and we'll talk about it more on the show. You're on the fence, but I'm going to convince you before the show's over that you need to make, <laughs> to make the plunge. And the only way to know if you're going to love it is just to get it and wear it. Now, I think I'm going to love it. The screen alone and the aesthetic alone are enough for me to love it. But is it going to look... Is it going to look cool? It's all about looking cool, Lewis. You know what I mean? If you can't look cool wearing it, then you can't do it. You yeah, just can't do I, it. It's true, man. If you put that thing on there and it's sticking out on both sides, you're going to be like, why do I have a saucer attached to my... I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I. it's really tempting. <laughs> all right, let's see. If there, is there anything else that we missed that we need to talk about before we uh, wrap up? Uh, 49 millimeters in height... Uh, the Ultra is a whopping four millimeters taller than the largest Series 7. Um, boasts the largest screen Apple's ever made. Flat surface, yeah, we know that. 2,000 nits, yeah, so that's twice as bright as the Series 7 and 8, which are 1,000 nits, which is crazy. And like I said, 1,000 nits is enough to view a screen outdoors. So 2,000 nits 
is I, I'm just ex- excited to try it because I have <laughs> never seen a screen that's 2,000 nits outdoors. So it's going to be the best looking display outdoors that we have probably ever seen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, there were a lot of surprises about this device, and uh, really, the only I, the only one that I could think of that's negative, aside from just you know, is it too big for your wrist? Is is the battery life? That was the one big letdown, yep. right? Same here. Because you know, thirty six hours. That okay, that's great, and I'm sure it's it's probably adequate. But it, it would be nice if they could somehow make it last like a week, right? I mean, two and a half days w- with a bunch of the features turned off. Okay, well, I mean, I guess maybe that's all right. And the other thing that uh, I wanted to mention is that um, that action button can be programmed to do literally whatever you want. Literally whatever you want is, is what I've heard. Mm. So it's going to be useful for turning on the lights in your house, I think, or starting a workout or anything else that you want to do. Really? I hadn't heard that. I heard that you can tie it to, um, oh, God, what, what are those things called? Um, I'm looking for it right now. You know those shortcuts. Um, shortcuts. Thank Siri you. Siri shortcuts. I heard that you can use it to activate Siri shortcuts. Huh. Which, if that's true, then then truly the sky's the limit for functionality. You've, you've got a, you've got a giant uh, rugged outdoor extreme sports watch, and you use it to turn your lights on. <laughs> hey, why not? I got the light button. <laughs> Check this out. Press the button. <laughs> TV comes on. Lights go on. So your couch is ready for you when you're gonna go and be. Uh, <laughs> A huge find, slob find, on the couch. Find my TV remote. <laughs> find my AirPods Pro too. Oh man, we spent way too much talking about this, but how you can't spend too much talking about this, this is an exciting product. Yeah, man. it is. It definitely is. Um, so the other thing I wanted to mention it has the Oceanic Plus um, mode for diving, second speaker, um, thirty six hours of battery life, as Lewis mentioned. Not as good as I would have hoped. You can get 60 hours with the extended low low battery mode that they are going to be releasing at some point in the fall. But that turns the screen off, which is a major bummer. Although it does still track your um, activity and stuff, so that's cool. But um, not as good as I would have hoped. But definitely better than the current Apple Watch. I mean, it's literally twice as long as the current Apple Watch. <laughs> the current Apple Watch is 18 hours. So now, instead of making it one day, you can make it two days without charging your Apple Watch. So, or I guess a day and a half. So that's pretty cool. Uh, all right. Should we move on to iPhone 14? I think that we should because we spent all that time talking about Apple Watch Ultra. You like I said, I'm, I'm liking this Ultra moniker. <laughs> I'm going to have fun saying this. Let's talk about iPhone 14 Pro. And we'll also touch on the 14 Plus. Although... No one here is getting the regular 14. Am I right? Do we even need to talk about it? I don't think so. I was telling those, like, we don't even need to bother talking about the 14. Everyone's going to get the Pro. And I know a lot of you are already on the 13 Pro, and you're probably wondering, should I upgrade? That's kind of what I was thinking. Um, I guess that would be my first question to you, Lewis. Upgrading? (laughs) Well, I mean, goes without saying. Member, Proud member of the iPhone upgrade program. Uh, I will absolutely be upgrading. And I couldn't be more excited because... uh, I love the look of that dynamic island. Oh yeah, oh, it's quite too. dynamic. That was that was probably my my second highest best in show was the <laughs> dynamic islands, and that gave us all a uh, can't innovate anymore. My ass, Phil Schiller moment right there, didn't it? <laughs> that was really surprising, really surprising, and 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 some of the the best, most creative use of UI that I have maybe ever seen. To be just to be totally. Uh, straight with you guys not to be a fanboy but like that really kind of blew my mind what they were able to do how they were able to churn a weakness that was that was a piece of joe rogan jujitsu right there <laughs> how they were able to take a a negative they were able to take something that people were going to attack probably and turn it into a piece of innovative technology with purely software yeah, that's and I true. think that's why they had Alan Dye, the VP of Human Interface. Like he was in the keynote, and I don't think he's ever been in the keynote before. This might be the first time, mm-hmm. and I think that that is because this piece of UI is so impressive and so original. It's like the um, the the pull down to refresh mechanism. It's like I would say in the in that in that tier of creativity, right? And that's well, that's why I think they had Alan Dye in the keynote because it was it was it was a, a a piece of 
it was a piece of mastery. It's like it shows what Apple's capable of that other companies really aren't able to emulate. And um, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, iPhone 14 Pro models get major camera updates and updates and always on displays. So let's go through the cameras or the uh, the uh, features of the phone. But what did you think about purple, Lewis? <sighs> Deep yeah. purple, yeah. Okay, smoke on the somebody's smoke on the water. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, that said, I mean, I'll probably end up ordering it just because it's because it's new. It's different. Yeah, you know. And I mean, I don't know. I'm a sucker for the different. I mean, uh, oh, black or silver or gold or purple. Yeah, I I was a little surprised, man. I actually thought there were going to be more colors rather than fewer options. <laughs> Me too. Very and, weird. And I, I was tweeting about this yesterday, and I don't want to be a um, Debbie Downer here, but I'm just so tired of these colors, man. I'm just so tired of these colors. I'm tired of the silver. I'm tired of the space gray. I'm tired oh, of the gold. Space black now, space man. Space black now. Which is wow, slightly how, darker than space gray. Right. I actually do like they made the um, the little lens around the cameras darker. It reminds me of the MacBook Pro keyboard, so I actually do like that. <laughs> but but even notice. still, yeah, they made it black. It, it's currently gray on the 13. Um, I just, you know, I'm just so tired of these colors, man. I, I <laughs> can they not? Can Apple not come up with more compelling colors? Why do they have to be so boring with these colors? And then the purple, like the pastel, um, the pastel purple, not doing it for me. I, I mean, I commented on Twitter. I mean, it made the nips go inverted. I didn't even know that was possible. You know, <laughs> they're normally at like a four or five with the new color, but they've actually gone inverted and I'll have to see a specialist about that. Uh, I just, I'm really disappointed with the color. Like when you get a new phone every year in order for it to feel new, I feel like they need to give you an exciting new color. And I know they're going to, they're going to do it six months in like they always do to refresh the life of the phone and get people interested in it again which is a bummer. Why can't they just make more colors available or do what we suggested last time? This is the answer, Lewis. Customized, uh, customizable colors, right? Like give you a whole list of colors and you get to pick the one that you oh, want. Right. You can add like metal spec to it, right? Or, or metal reflective stuff in there. So it oh, kind of glitters. That, that would, people would go nuts over that. Um, about the phone itself. Okay. So should I run through these specs? Whoops. Okay. Uh, so they got the A16 chip as we were expecting. Um, the A16 is exclusive to the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. Doesn't go in the 14. The 14 gets the A15 Bionic again. So we all knew that was going to happen. It did happen. Uh, pre-order is going live on September 9th at 5 a.m. Pacific time. Available next Friday. These also have the Super Retina XDR displays, which are two times brighter than the iPhone 13 Pro, up to 2,000 nits outdoors. Again, can't overemphasize how bonkers that is, how freaking bright that is. Uh, they have the always-on display that that is, of course, of course, exclusive to the Pro and the Pro Max. We knew that was going to be true. Uh, the A16 has a six-core CPU, five-core GPU, 50% 50, 50 more memory bandwidth. Um, let's talk about the cameras because that's clearly going to be one of the... Um, the most uh, important parts of the phone. So now this is really interesting. We had talked a lot previously about how the camera was going to be uh, 48 megapixels, and that's true. But you actually are not going to be taking photos bigger than 12 me megapixels in most scenarios. And I and I actually didn't realize that until, and I hate to admit this, I was reading The Verge, and they talked about this. So in most photos, the phone is going to, is going to take a 12 megapixel section of that 48 megapixel sensor. And then it's going to pixel bin. So it's going to combine data from all of the pixels so that it creates the most pleasing image. And it's going to give you a 12 megapixel uh, image out of that. So you're not actually getting going to get a 48 megapixel uh, image from, from the phone. Unless you take a, a pro raw image, in which case you can take a 48 megapixel uh, image if you want. But in most instances, the um, the extra sensor space is being used for zooming. So Apple calls it optical quality zoom, right? So um, it's not optical zoom in all instances. It's optical quality. So they're going to be digitally cropping, but because they have so much extra pixel extra extra pixel space to, to pull from, it's still going to be 12 megapixels of quality. Uh, let's see here. 
so yeah, the, uh, the, uh, okay, here we go. Apple's touting sharper and brighter macro shots on the ultra wide camera with three times better low light performance, which is bonkers. That's a huge increase. Two times better low light performance on the updated telephoto photo camera. Uh, front fancy camera gets a wider aperture, which means it will be a bit better in low light slightly and autofocus. And I just love this because we knew this was going to happen. Last year, when they introduced the iPhone 13, one of the big features was cinematic mode, and I was super excited about it. And then they revealed later that it's only in 1080p, which at that point, I never even bothered using it, using it again because I don't want to take 1080p videos anymore. And this year, they bumped it to 4K. So now the cinematic mode becomes actually useful. <laughs> You'll be able to use uh, 4K up to uh, 30 frames per second. You can also do um, 24 frames per second. You also get, get crash detection and satellite SOS messaging. So all in all, it's a, a nice update this year. I, I have a suspicion that the cameras are, are going to be more impressive than we than we think that they're going to be because that's always what they do for these off like these smaller update years. Uh, but not a lot of huge improvements this year that get me excited. I think the thing that gets me the most excited is um, the, like the brightness of the display being 2000 nits because again, that's going to be a huge improvement. Any thoughts, Lewis? The dynamic island. Oh right! I mean, come on. That's right. that was the biggest surprise of the of the event. I mean, that was the. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, you were you were saying before, like they turned a negative into a not just a positive, but like a whoa, look at that positive. It was. I mean, that thing looks kind of amazing. It'll be interesting to see how it actually works in real life. And but uh, yeah, I mean, and it, you know, I was just trying to figure out if there has ever been like a bigger difference between the pro model and the regular model. I'm trying to think, and I can't think of any examples, not a single one. There's there's never been a, a UI difference like that, has there? I don't believe so. I mean, something no. that radical and different? I mean, and think about how the... different the iPhone Pro experience is going to be from the regular iPhone with this model, these models. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, they weren't able to get rid of the notch, but they repurposed it in such a way that you'll basically not even notice that it's there because now it's interactive. And um, it will allow, and you'll be interacting with the notch in all these different ways. Yeah, it, I, I went back and rewatched that. I was just like, and really paid attention to you know the different ways that they have it, ha, utilize it right. And there's so it, it just does a really effective job of, you know, there's that there is that pill shaped dead space in the in the screen, but it. it with the wide things and the big things that pop up, there you know, there's always that black space, but it's always well hidden, right? Because it's it's just part of the it, it it's part of the black background. It it, it disappears, and uh, man, some of that stuff looked really wild and and useful. It's masterful. It really is. It's masterful UI design. I'm showing this video on Twitter of this person who is sliding a uh, an app up into the dynamic island they're listening to music and when they slide it up it's it's in slow-mo and when they slide it up the dynamic island grows and then the app like s shrinks down and slides into it like a mail slot and and yeah. the dynamic island like it does like this weird like gulp motion <laughs> yeah. and like is... eats it and then it shrinks back down to its normal size it's like those kinds of animations being included they're just masterful ui design it really is. I mean, I, I hadn't even seen that one. Uh, I, I don't remember seeing something disappear up like that. It's, I don't know, man. I mean, remember, like, the, like the leaks came out within the last week. Oh, there's, it's not going to be a, I guess it was, we were talking about this last, right? It's not going to be a pill and a hole. It's going to be a, a one pill-shaped thing through software. But, man, you, you know, talk about a rumor that undersold the, uh, the actual thing. I mean, holy moly! Not only is it a a pill shape through software, it's it's all these different sizes, and it's just I I don't know. I I found that to be utterly exciting, and and uh, like wow, you've got to be kidding me! It, I, I can't. I honestly, I can't wait to try it out. And it it works with all sorts of apps. So like, you can use it with maps, music. You can have a timer on the screen and it almost acts as like a dynamic widget. I mean, it does act like a dynamic widget because it will sit there and show you like a timer and the countdown and stuff. And then you can tap it to like reopen like specific apps. 
and um, it will also provide you with information like sports sports scores and yeah. ride sharing information. And yeah, then that, and Apple is opening up to third parties, I think. So third parties yes. can can include their own interactions with it. That was another thing I found kind of shocking about it, right? I mean, usually when there's this new interesting thing like that, Apple likes to keep it clamped down for a few cycles. But yeah, right out of the gate, they're saying open to everybody to use, you know, with these strict guidelines in place, I'm sure, about how, how to use it, when to use it, and what will look good and what won't. But yeah, I, that, that little sports score thing, that, that was a, a shocking one, right? I mean, the, the thing just expands, and on either side, there's a little icon of the sports team with along with the live score. God, that's sh- it looks great. And the fact that it's software-driven is what I'm really impressed by because normally I don't get that excited about software features because they're software features, right? Like there are some cool ones like the crash detection stuff. I guess that's hardware and software is cool. Um, and uh, like the like the satellite connectivity thing is cool. But this kind of like software innovation are, is something that I don't normally get excited excited <laughs> by. Like it's it's cool and I'm like, oh, that, that, that will be useful. But the fact that this is purely a software innovation is also what really is impressive to me. Like they really thought this through deeply and churned this little space that was going to be kind of an eyesore and a little bit awkward into something that now is extremely useful and that you'll want to interact with every day. I just am really impressed by it. I think your uh, reference to the the rubber band effect is is a good it's a good one. You know, this is one of those things. It's like wow that. It makes you feel like you've got a well put together thing in your hand that smart people designed, and it, it, I don't know. It just had it. It's they describe. They, I think they use the term magical, and I think that it's probably accurate. I think it probably is. I think it's probably going to be like you're just going to sit and almost giggle with glee when you use this thing for the first time. So you're getting one. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to the Apple upgrade um, plan. I think for the first time ever. Like usually I buy my phones, you know, full on every year and then sell them. Cause you're but, a masochist. But I'm like, I, I was just thinking about. It. I'm like, why even do that? Why why even do that anymore? I'm gonna get the new phone every year anyway, and it's like, yeah, it will be a little bit more expensive doing it this way because they force you to buy Apple Care Plus. But I'm like, okay. Did you is hear it, that? Is it a ghost? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, let me know if um, you need to call the Ghostbusters. I'm going to turn on the uh, uh, automatic SOS or whatever <laughs> in case somebody throws it, puts a bag over my head and drags me out of here. <laughs> oh, it is San Francisco, so that is a possibility. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to probably switch to just the upgrade plan and just do that every year from now on. I'm like, what, what am I doing? I'm going to get the new phone anyway, so I might as well just you know pay for it monthly and... Um, and then get the new phone and not have to sell my phone every year, which is such a huge pain in the butt nowadays. And there's so yeah, many I, scammers. It's like... I just, I, you couldn't... I, I, honestly, I don't... I, I was going to say you couldn't pay me enough. You, you could pay me enough to do it, but it would be quite a pretty penny. <laughs> and, and you actually don't make that much more back by selling your phone, buying it full price, and then selling it. I mean, you, you can. I mean, it might be a couple hundred bucks a year if you really do it perfectly, but... With all the time and effort that is involved, it's it's not really worth it to me anymore. So anyway, I'm probably going to do that and get this phone. I, I think that for me, I have the iPhone 13 Pro. I know I'm not everyone, but um, the reason I feel like it's worth upgrading every year for me is because I have kids and I'm like, I'm always taking videos of them and like any camera improvement they can make is something that I'm going to get such a benefit of like immediately and it will be something that will allow me to capture better videos and, and photos of my kids and my family. And these phones are getting so good. Like, dude, so I'm going to Disney World, right? By the way, we're not having a show. We're having a show next week, but we're not going to have a show on, uh, let's see here. We're having a show next week. We're, we're, we're going to be doing it on Wednesday, the 14th. And then we're, we're going to have no show on the 22nd or the 29th. Just FYI, because I'm going to Disney World. And I, I am actually debating on whether or not I should take my Fujifilm uh, mirrorless camera, which takes beautiful f- photos, but it's heavy. Oh, no way. And I'm actually wondering if I should just leave it at home and take my iPhone because the iPhone photos are so good now. Like, they're not as good as my Fujifilm, but they're they're pretty good. <gasps> and I don't I, really know if it's worth carrying a camera around all day. What, when are you leaving? I'm leaving next Thursday. You're leaving the day before the phone arrives. Yeah. That is some poor timing. Well, I, I'm still probably going to have 
going to get it. I'll just have it delivered to wherever I'm going to be on oh, Friday. That is, that's pretty fancy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to Georgia first to visit some family, so I'll probably just have it delivered to one of their houses. I see. Yeah. I, I thought right then I, I take it all back. I, I thought this through, but the thing is, is like I want to <laughs> I want to have a case for it, and then then I'm gonna be on a small road trip, and it's like, I guess I could get the iPhone leather case, which I actually might do. You don't really need a case, but I don't know, dude. I drop my phone all the time, all the time. But I guess I'll have Apple Care Plus, so I can literally just throw it on the ground. Right. Yeah, just run over it with my car. Doesn't treat matter. It like garbage, just throw it around. <laughs> oh man, we got so much going on in the chat. Shout out to Justin Alfonso joining us for the first time ever. You made the correct Welcome. call there, my friend. <laughs> oh my, I, I can't even follow all this chat. My apologies. Um, you guys are having conversations. Uh, Streamline Airfun, have you found the kid who stole your six plus at Seven <laughs> Eleven yet? Oh, you want me to bring that up? Well, let's just say that he's fertilizing my garden right now. <laughs> And so is his whole family. Oh my God. Uh, let's see. Michael Cor- Coran. I think it would be cooler just to have a resizable widget that could accomplish the same stuff. And then they could still develop an under display camera or some kind of notchless display. Yeah, actually, I mean, in an ideal world, they get rid of the notch entirely. They get rid of the pill and they have a camera that shoots from underneath the display. I'm totally with you. I don't want to have any kind of cutout at all. But in lieu of that future... Or in lieu of uh, uh, of that um, eventuality, I think this is a really good step, right? Like they have to have something there, so let's make that space useful. And think how small this space is. Like, can you even imagine like the guy who came up with this idea and he's like, "Hey, let's figure out what we can do with this space." And they're like, "Dude, the space is like four millimeters tall by like eight millimeters wide. Like, what are we gonna do with it?" And they figured it out. Anyway, we're fanboying, especially you, Lewis. <laughs> um. Should we talk about iPhone 14 Plus? It exists. I Let's mean, at least you know, mention it, and then we'll yeah. then we'll move on. Although I guess we're making pretty good time, but I, I gotta be wrap. I gotta be walking out of here in 20 minutes, Lewis. Oh my! I know we could go on for hours and hours and hours, and I love this because we got so many people here. But we gotta cruise through the rest of this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, iPhone 14, you know the mini is gone. In its place is the Plus, which is the same size. Actually, as the, actually, Lewis, they're still selling the Mini. I know, but not the, the iPhone 14 Mini. iPhone 13 Mini right. exists. That's true. I think maybe iPhone 12 Mini. I don't know. I, I know that one of the Minis is still around. I think if it's you still. just got to have a small phone. But, uh, you know, the reality is most people want the bigger phones, so that's what they're making. Um, this one's 6.7 inch, same size as the uh, Pro Max. Uh, let's see. It's it's a hundred dollars more than the six point one inch version of the regular iPhone. Um, and by the way, I mean both of those. Like, like so. Okay, what's that? Eight ninety nine, and a Pro is nine ninety nine. I mean, it's the fourteen is seven ninety nine. The Plus is eight ninety nine. The fourteen is nine ninety nine, and then the fourteen Max is ten ninety nine. So yeah, super hard not to just pay that little bit of extra money and go Pro. I think. Oh but, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it, th- to be honest, this this whole like. I watched it again, the whole thing about the iPhone, the regular ones. I mean, you know, they're getting camera upgrades, too. And the images they shot with those look very impressive but as well. But the camera upgrades are the new photonic pipeline, they're calling it. The photonic engine. Photonic engine. And, and all the phones are getting this. And it's yeah, a software yeah. feature, but it's one of those, it's it's like one of those, oh, it's kind of cool software feature. But the thing that was surprising about that, they're like, oh, we're going to be doing all of our post-processing on the raw image as opposed to the to the created images and i'm like were you not doing that before <laughs> like i thought that's always how it worked because why would you post process a f- a fully created image as opposed to anyway so maybe that will make their each their computational hdr look more realistic i'm hoping that it will yeah and it, it it's also getting the action mode which i don't think we mentioned before but you know what that is it's like uh Ma- basically makes it so maybe you don't have to use a gimbal if you're running I forgot around you know, to mention anti that. You. anti shutter or anti what do they call it? Anti and wiggle, shake. <laughs> anti shake, shake whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, so I, this I, thing's getting it. You know the the two regular models, the normie iPhones. Um, let me just chime in real fast on that because I did notice a substantial digital crop, which is not surprising for that mode. So, like, if you're using a camera and you activate that mode, the image is going to crop in because it needs to have some image that it can throw away to 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 adjust that shake it did look super smooth i have to say and that's a feature that a lot of people will use but you are going to get a uh, a pretty significant at least as far as i saw crop when you turn that thing on 
Hmm. Anyway, I did sorry, not notice ahead. that. You um, didn't even notice. Okay, so maybe yeah, it's just it, me. I mean, all the, uh, you know, all, all the camera stuff, I'm sure it'll be better. I'm sure this will be a better phone than the iPhone 13, but, you know, it's a, kind of a ho-hum. Everything's a little better, right? Everything incremental still has a notch. No dynamic island on the no. regular models. So although it does uh, get the satellite connectivity and yeah, it's, the crash detection. Yeah, 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 right. So it's it's basically yeah, it's definitely better, but it the, the amazing thing to me is that they added all these things to the, the pro models and they didn't raise the price. So now especially now that the mini's gone and the in the plus eases up closer to the pro, it, it's it's really I don't know. I mean a hundred bucks. What do you, if you start paying that off over a year, what's a hundred bucks? Uh, eight bucks a month, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I wonder. I, it, we sort of speculated in our piece that maybe the the a iPhone fourteen plus would become the best seller. You know, like the best selling iPhone anywhere, right? Because and and iPhone. I don't, I don't know if you've been watching these. I think you have. They they've been crushing it. I mean, they're like number one manufacturer of of smartphones, at least in the U.S. I don't remember if it was U.S. or international, but uh, it was. Lately, it was like, wow, they really are just killing it. They just keep selling these things. And the regular iPhone, not the Pro, was the the biggest seller. God, look at this. And they actually have, like, decent colors. I actually, as yeah, opposed to Mom's but... mini, minivan blue, I actually like this color. Like, this purple is way nicer than the Pro purple. Does it? I, I, I kind of thought it looked like the mom's minivan blue is it, it, is it, it a deeper I feel like blue it's a, i feel like it's a lighter blue yeah that's that looks an awful lot like the mom's minivan blue well, you know and the Subtlety purple makes a big difference, yeah. is way more lavender yes than, than it's deep lighter. purple and yeah, that deep so, purple is not deep it's like no, it's, it's like mid purple it's yeah it's it's subdued purple <laughs> the red one is now like the only one that's uh in any way outlandish color you know mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I think they need to uh, rethink their color strategy. But then again, I think Tim Cook would say, oh, we're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. I mean, I'm looking at my Apple stock, and I'm like, keep doing what you're doing, TC. <laughs> don't change. Never change. <laughs> Although I do think that if they added a really cool color to the Pro line, it would sell like crazy. Like bronze or you're like... Hung up on or, the bronze. Dude, that bronze was one of the best colors I'd ever seen. The best colors that never happened. And uh, orange sparkle, that that blue blue base sparkle that we looked at. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That thing would sell like crazy. <laughs> all right, so that's all we have to say about that. I mean, it's just that it's nothing to it. I mean, it's 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 iPhone 13 part two, you know? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, it's better. If I had a, if I had a regular 13... I don't know that I'd be upgrading. I mean, if you know, if I just, I, I don't, I can't imagine I would if I wasn't in the iPhone upgrade program. But and you know, actually, the same might go for the Pro models, but actually, not really because that dynamic, that dynamic island. I, I, I don't know. I just keep, keep thinking of uh, what was his name, Hervé Villages, the guy on it's Fantasy Jimmy. Island. Oh, boss, the play, the play, the notch, the notch, it's gone. <laughs> Um, I do love that during the keynote, one of the features that they pointed out is, oh, the chips run cooler. And I was like, oh, boy. You know we're <laughs> in for a, for a real snooze fest here when they're talking about how cool the chips are. And that, I was not, that was not a snooze fest. Well, when they were talking about the iPhone 14. Oh, okay. That oh, yeah. part of it. That's I, that particular I, I was resting my eyes, Louis. I, see what I was saying. waiting for the 14 Pro. I, see. <laughs> I was like, iPhone 14 part, iPhone 13 part two, you know. Return of the iPhone 13. It's, I mean, it's cool for for normies, for people that don't follow this stuff closely and don't know that they're getting an iPhone 13 that's slightly better. Then it's fine, and it's like, oh wow, satellite SOS, which is cool. Yep, and Hope better low light performance. Same with Great. Car, car crash detection. Totally, totally, very cool features. And then, and then I think the 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 winner here is the iPhone 14 Plus. You know, huge phone for way less than having to pay for an iPhone 14 Max. So, you know that that's. That's cool from a price perspective. All right, Lewis, let's move on. Yeah. Let's talk about last story of the day. Let's talk about AirPods Pro, personalized spatial audio, precision finding. 
Will you be purchasing a new pair of AirPods? Are new pair of AirPods in your future, Lewis? Well, now this is a tough one because I mean I already have regular AirPods, which I use every day, almost all day, mm-hmm. for listening to podcasts, taking phone calls, everything. And I have the AirPods Pro that I use mostly when I'm uh, on the elliptical, you know. Oh yeah. So I don't have to hear the elliptical. I use noise canceling, and also when I go flying or you know whatever when I need to active noise cancellation, it's a little bit difficult to. Um, justify when i've already got two perfectly good pair of headphones however two times as good active noise cancellation uh better battery life right six hours instead of i think it's four on the regular one mm-hmm. uh what's the other thing oh yeah the case like is easier oh, to man. find it, the case is like that where, alone is almost worth it right yeah the case is where all the the most important features are in my opinion <laughs> The because they're gonna make it. They're gonna make the AirPods Pro sound better. I mean, they'll be better, but they're not gonna be drastically better. I don't think, at least not from what I've seen. But the case is where is where all the heat is, <laughs> and by heat, I mean that's where all the hot features are. I don't know, man. They've also got an H2 chip in it, right? So, yep. You know that it's gonna be better. It's gonna be better all around. It's probably gonna be, you know, it'll probably. I bet you this thing connects faster to your devices. I bet it switches faster between devices. Although I don't think they mentioned anything like that. But it, it's but not it probably be slower, will. right? Yeah. yeah, the AirPods 3 are better at those things than the previous versions of the AirPods. So I'm I'm certain that there'll be incremental changes that make that better. Um, and well, and honestly, two times better noise cancellation. That's that's kind of compelling. Uh, I don't know if it's compelling enough to go ahead and buy it right now. I mean, I I think what I'm going to do is see how well my uh, <laughs> my battery life is on them right now. I mean, that, that's the only way that it starts to be like, if it's, if my AirPods Pro are about to kind of be done, which a lot of people say that, like, oh, it's been three years and so they must be dying. Mine don't seem to be that bad. So I don't know. But you know, then again, I'm I'm not on the elliptical for more than 20 minutes, right? So That's it? 20 minutes? I, I don't know. Well, I just try to get the blood flowing. <laughs> gotta get back to work. Lewis, you gotta get on that, man. You gotta be on there for at least an hour. Oh my, an hour? I've never been on an elliptical for an hour. I lose my mind. <laughs> 20 minutes? You're barely getting the pump going by that point. <laughs> uh, it's better than nothing. That is true. And of course, you can attach the AirPods case to the lanyard now, which I actually think is helpful. Just, you you know, get the speaker on the bottom, which is, you know. Right. Absol- and how how yeah. many times have you lost the case Dude, with the. Uh, over and all over, the time. right? All, all the time. All the time. And, yeah. and you can never find them because the stupid Find My app will only play noises on the AirPods themselves, which is so dumb. So now, like, the case itself will let you let you find it. You got the precise Find My uh, finding with um, uh, the U1 chip in here, the same as the AirTags. So now it will tell you exactly where your AirPods case is. I mean, like I said, it seems like all the most exciting features happen in the case. Oh, I don't know, man. That whole... Um you know, what's it called? Personal space, personal spatial audio or what do they call it? Oh yeah. But where you, uh, you take your phone and scan your ear. That's actually pretty wild. That's, huh? I, I mean, that was, wow. I really want to see that in action. I want to see, well, hear it in action, I suppose. Uh, um, cause that's, that's kind of nutty, man. Like, uh, it's getting weirder and weirder, right? Yeah. I wonder how that works because it can't see inside your ear. It can only see your head. It's it's saying basically that it looks at at the shape of your ear and figures yeah, but out how, how far into your ear can it well, see. But it it I mean you know, ears are set up to gather sound, right? I mean so yeah. so your ear is unique to you, and it's <laughs> but it it gets real nutty. Like I mean, especially if you're talking about like for instance music. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I I mean. Honestly, how, like my music is going to sound different than yours. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it. I almost don't want to start thinking about it. It makes my head start to spin out a little bit. Maybe like, my music oh, will my sound God. better because my ears are better than yours. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Have you thought it's about just, that? Just weird. So I, I, I would, I'd be very curious to try that. I, I would like. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's starting to add up. This, uh, this little event is starting mm-hmm. to be one of the pricier events. So I got to cut corners where I can. I think that I'm not going to order the AirPods Pro unless I get to the point where mine don't work anymore. Disappointed the, to say uh, it, but 
they have the extra small tips that come with these now. I will say these these headphones are everything I've ever wanted in a pair of headphones. But except I can't stand the tips. Can't. I cannot do it. Not down with the silicone. I hate having tips in my ears. <laughs> um oh yeah, the other thing that we forgot to mention is the uh the AirPods Pro 2 have touch capacitive um stems. And instead of just pinching them, now you can run your finger up and down them to, to adjust the volume. Like, that's huge. You, uh, I always use my Apple Watch for that. but I mean, I do too. But there are a lot of instances where I want to just do it on the stem, and that would be convenient to do. I don't know. That looked a little finicky. I could imagine that being complicated and hard, or, hard to pull off. Yeah, kind of hard to do precisely. Like, oops, I pulled it out of my ear, or oh, whoops, yeah. I, I stopped the track, or now I forwarded something else. I don't know. I, uh, maybe that's great. Maybe it's... I actually uh, didn't like they switched to from tap, that, that tap control in the previous AirPods, to the stem pinch, because the stem pinch, I feel like, is a lot harder to accomplish. And it, when you're trying to pause something, oftentimes you need to do it quickly, and... I don't want, and especially if you have gloves on, like you, you can't pinch the stem on an AirPod. Whereas before, you could just tap it, and a quick, and all of a sudden it was paused. And, like that was super useful, especially w- since that's with the Air- AirPods three, and it doesn't have a silicone, so it's not as tightly wedged in your ear. Don't you just? I mean, it's like it's so easy to get it out of place, and you know, I, I, I just find the whole like. Yeah, I mean, it. don't get me wrong. It's better than a lot of other things I've used. Like, I mean, some of the ones, like other manufacturers, they have actual physical buttons there, and you're pressing, like you're pressing a button and pushing the thing into your ear and into your head, and it, it actually feels like, you know, it might be dangerous. So I, I definitely like the the controls on the stems, but I don't, I just, I, 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 I agree with you. I like the tap. I feel like the, the new, like, press, it, it's just a little finicky. And I've used these for quite some time now. And I still feel a little, you know, I have a little hesitation. Let's put it that way. God, just those tips, man. I just. <laughs> I can't believe you hate the tips so I hate much. the tips, man. I hate the tips. I can't do it. Okay, one last thing we'll say, and then we got to roll out here, is they also released an updated uh, case for the AirPods uh, 3, which... Did they? Yeah, which that. which they re- they removed um, MagSafe charging capacity from it, and they just have Lightning, and it's $10, what? and it's $10 cheaper. So Dude, it goes, Where did you hear this? Um, this is one of the announcements that Apple made yesterday, I think. You should look into it. What? Yeah. So uh, the other thing, I don't think we mentioned this, um, you can charge this thing now on your Apple Watch charger. Did you notice that? Oh, um, on your Apple Watch? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that is super handy. I that thought, is I, super handy. There's so many times I've wondered why you can't do that. I'm telling you, man. That's the cool. case. The, 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 the case is the reason <laughs> to do it. There's nothing else here. It is very tempting. <laughs> all right, Lewis, look. I could talk Apple with you all day, but oh, I can't. Because i got to be walking out of here in four minutes. Wow. So we, we, gotta... even get, we didn't even get to the Series 8. Well, we're going to have to talk about that on a later show. It's like the Apple Watch Ultra, but worse. Oh, you know? it's got It's got some of the stuff the Apple Watch Ultra has, but not all of it. It's smaller. Rough it's, year for the regular uh, the regular line, A lot of right? people I've, I, I heard are upgrading, and this is me too, just because we, we want a different Apple Watch, and there's nothing else to go to that, that is unique except for the Ultra. So that's like one of the reasons people are doing it. But we'll, we'll have to save that for another show, Lewis. Yeah. We, we, got, we got to wrap it up there. That's all the cool cast we have for you guys this week. If you want to talk to us about your favorite stuff from the keynote. We're both on Twitter. I'm at Arafon, E-R-F-O-N. Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. This has been the Cool Cast, the best 30 plus minute Apple conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the Cool Cast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening, for hanging out live, and we will see you guys next time. Firm handshakes to all of you. I'm talked out, Lewis. We had 10 pounds of show in a five pound bag. <laughs> My tongue's dry. <laughs> I'm slurring. I'm slipping. I'm sleeping. It's too much tech for one show. And you got to cram it all in right before we go live. You know, so my brain's. My brain's got too many folds. It's been a good week. I had you know to get I mean? a, a part time job to pay off all these devices. 
start a side hustle. <laughs> yeah, but we gotta do a show so we can afford to buy all this stuff. <laughs> I can write it all off my taxes. So I can talk about it on the show. All right, everyone. Good luck in your pre-orders. My condolences to all of you on the West Coast that have to be up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Oh, brutal. TC's, TC's going to be, he'll, he'll have been up for three hours already. Uh, yeah, all right. he thinks that's, that's just it. normal. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right.